love it? It's pretty. The castle is pretty. Isn't it's it pretty? Over there. It's over there. Oh, hey everybody. Hello. Welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah. Hey, and I'm Kevin. And we are an American family who moved from the USA to Germany in February of 2021. And we're sharing all of our adventures with you. We have four kids. And a cat. <laughs> One of the things I think is so cool about the Moselle is the Mosel River is, is how you can see so many different castles all along the way. And I remember being impressed with that the first time we mm -hmm. came 14 years ago. Yeah, and so there's just, you know, castle ruins or castles on almost every hilltop. And it's really cool that, you know, all the lords or whoever was ruling, you know, all the little kingdoms in the area that made up Germany at the time and how uh, they were all, you know, had their trade going up and down mm, the river. Yeah. Yeah, just how an important strategic area this was yes. in those times. Yeah, so I really love the rich history in this part of Germany and it's always been when we lived in France, this was a very close part for us to visit. So it's one of our favorite parts, I guess, of, yeah. of Germany. We have a lot of memories here and it's when we started to really fall in love with Germany was this mm -hmm. area. And so. Yeah, and I've, I've been reading up a lot lately about, you know, the importance of, you know, the Moselle, where the Moselle with all the wine here and then mm -hmm. where, and then, then in Koblenz, where it comes together with the Rhine and how, you know, the Rhine is, really you know separates you know the, the eastern side from the western side mm. and the roman you know how the romans really never advanced over the rhine and there's okay. just so much history in this area yes, ancient and, history you know and the rhine you know starts in the alps and goes all the way out to mm. uh, goes out to the atlantic in uh you know and in, in the at the netherlands and just how important you know the going up and down the Rhine and be able to resupply the Roman troops. And, you know, that's a big reason why the Romans never went past it, because it was an easy way for them to be able to resupply. And it's just so cool how the geography of the mm -hmm. area yeah. has influenced the direction of the civilization in here yeah. and and how, you know, where the cities grow up and and all of their traditions are so linked to the geography. Mm -hmm. It's just really neat. And when we lived in France, of course, France is so well known for its wine, but it wasn't until we came to this area of Germany 14 years ago that we that I learned how good German wine was. And I didn't know yeah. that this region is full of vineyards. You know, whether in, you're in the US or any other parts of Europe, you know, German wine is can be very good as well. Yeah. And um, even at home in, in Bayern in Bavaria, I try to really make sure to buy German wine. And it almost always comes from this area of Germany, this and Franconia. Right. So it's, it's really cool. If you didn't know that about Germany, they do have excellent wine as well as beer. And I think we need to get some of those uh, German wine glasses. They they come from the Roman times. Those green ones. I don't know if you've seen them. Oh. There's a green, a very typical I didn't know green about this. Uh, wine goblet that you have in Germany. And uh, oh, it dates back. Drop us some links below, guys. Yeah, it's really cool. We need. I want to buy some. some. <laughs> I didn't even know about that. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Yesterday we saw Berg Elts as you just saw. Today we were gonna go to Trier, but Kevin is not feeling well and neither is one of our kids. There is a cold going around our family and, and it has hit Kevin the hardest. He doesn't feel well, so we don't really have the energy to go to Trier today. So we're gonna try to head down to Kolkham, Kolkham uh, Castle and perhaps see the castle. It's a bit of a walk to get up to it. And when you're not feeling well, it's a hard walk. So. The kids are needing playtime after vacation last week and now vacation again this week. They're a bit vacationed out and they just want to play and have fun. So uh, anyway, it's another life example, life lesson of uh, learning to go with the flow. And you know, you can't control kids, you can't, I mean you can, but 
you may have a lot of whining and complaining and, and we want our kids to enjoy our vacations. We want them to enjoy, you know, have good memories of having seen Berg Els and Kolkham and the Moselle and all the history that is here in this area. We want them to have good memories of this. So we don't like to push our kids really hard. We like for them to enjoy it. And which means we have to find Spielplatz, <laughs> Spielplatz and we have to find playgrounds. We have to make it fun for them as well, like get them ice cream and things like that. So we're gonna try to make this day as much fun as we can for the kids. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully won't wear Kevin out too much. Um, yeah, anyway, we're really liking our Airbnb. We've got like four bedrooms <laughs> to ourselves. This whole floor is ours, and uh, so that's really nice. Um, the couple is a lovely couple. They make really tasty uh, breakfasts, and we've been eating at their restaurant outside and their beautiful garden. So it's been a really nice stay here, and um, we have lots of space, so that's really nice. But yeah, our family is vacationed out, doing two vacations back to back. We're probably not gonna do that again. <laughs> Uh, it's been it's been too much for the kids and even for me and Kevin as well. We're tired. So All right, let's see what we can see of Kochen Castle today not making any promises We may not be able to go inside, but we couldn't film it anyway if we could go inside um, But yeah, let's see if we can make it to the castle Take the feeling, put my head on my heart, I won't let it go. You're my light through the dark, you keep me believing, thanking my lucky stars everywhere I go. A little bit of love, a little bit of love makes it feel right. So while you're looking at some beautiful images of Reichberg Kochem Castle, I thought I would share a little bit of the history of the castle with you, and this is taken from german-way.com. The castle we see today towering above the scenic town of Kochem on the Moselle River is not the castle that originally stood there in the 12th century. That castle had a long and colorful history until French King Louis XIV had his troops obliterate it in 1689. 
The castle remained a colorful stone ruin for 180 years until wealthy Berlin businessman Louis Ravinet decided to buy the ruins and rebuild the castle in 1868. But he was not interested in restoring it to its original Romanesque style and condition. He had his architects create a neo-Gothic castle that could serve as a summer residence for his family. Which, by the way, could you imagine having this as your summer home? Oh, the lifestyles of the rich and famous. So the original Kokum Castle, perched prominently on a hill 300 feet above the Moselle River, served to collect tolls from passing ships. Modern research dates its origins to around 1100. Before its destruction by the French in 1689, which was a fate shared by many other castles and towns in the Palatinate, the castle had a long and fascinating history. It changed hands numerous times, and like most castles, also changed its form over the centuries. If you'd like to learn more about the history of this castle, I will link to this website in the description box below. Griffin, where are we? At Cochin Castle? Cochin Castle was built under around the year 1000 under the reign of Count Palatine as a in nine in 1151 it became the Imperial Castle under the Hohenstaufen dynasty. After being destroyed in 1989, the, a new castle was reached upon the ruins in nine in 1868. Ever since since 1978, the Imperial Castle has been in the possession of Cochum Town Council. Mm. There, there Here is my jacket. And Here is my sword. This is how to make your own homemade scabbard. Your own homemade scabbard, okay. So, step one. No mask. <laughs> Stick the sword under there, like that. It's easy if you have quillions, these things. And then you yeah. just gotta tie, then you just gotta tie another knot. And there you go, scabbard. Using a double knot from your own sweater. You nice. Can even carry your, you can even carry your mask on it. <laughs> <laughs> so Now you can do all of that while eating ice cream. Mmm. Got some choco? I got choco. choco. I made it.
on one of our dear followers, Christian, is gonna show us around Trier and we can't wait to meet Christian tomorrow and have him show us around his hometown. So we'll show you the footage of Trier now and how our trip was. This is Christian. He's going to tell us about this building behind yeah. us. It's called the Drei Königen Haus, so three kings or three wise men. And um, one special thing about it, as you can see on the first floor, that's not a balcony. That was indeed the entrance door. Um, in medieval times, Trier was attacked quite often by barbarians, Vikings, so on. And so they built their main entrance door on the first floor, put a ladder down, and then if some attackers came, they could simply pull up the ladder and the others had a hard time getting in. So they were a little bit more safe, not too much. Depends on what the others did. I'm not as heavy as the sun and not as bright. <laughs> not as bright. So right here we have the Porta Negra or Black Gate, um, which is ironic because it used to be white when it was constructed. It used to be one of the city gates, later on it was converted to a church and now it's more or less a city gate tourist attraction. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and it's more than 2,000 years old? Yeah. Built by the Romans? Yes, um, indeed. Yeah. Um, it was built more or less around the same time as the city was founded, so it's a little bit over 2,000 years. Wow. Having ice but and gold mitagasin? Yeah! Oh my gosh. <laughs> As you can tell, we weren't able to see all that much of Trier. We had to head out of there quickly because the kids were done and they were tired. Um, Ella was crying and one of our other sons was 
really not feeling well. Like during lunch with, with a Christian, he just was just laying his head on the table. We just had to leave. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't working. I know. And I'm st honestly, I'm still disappointed that we didn't get to see a lot more of cheer. It's nobody's fault or anything. It's Sometimes you've got to admit defeat. It was. Yeah, it was like admitted, admitting defeat. Really, all we saw of Trier was Puerta Negra and that main, <laughs> that main road area. to get there. Yeah, the pedestrian center of Trier. So I'm sure we'll be back at some point because we didn't get to see all that much. And the kids really are interested in Roman history and they like to see Roman ruins. So yeah. Maybe. We'll go back at some point, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry we don't have all that much footage to show you of Trier. So, we really want to give Christian a shout out. Because as we left uh, to get on the train, he ran off for a second. We didn't know where he went. And he had bought us some local wine. Yes. And it was really nice of him to do that. So, Christian, this is for you. And we <laughs> wanted to drink the wine. Uh, for you, do a prost for you, do a, a cheers for you. Thank you for showing us around Trier, even though it was only like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your time, and uh, thank you for being so patient with us, and the kids really enjoyed you. Um, even Ella continued to talk about Christian. Yeah, the days after, she's like, our friend, or what did he call him? Yes, what did she, she call was him? like, are we going to, yeah, what, what did she call him? I don't know, our, our friend, are we going to see our friend again? And So, yeah. Yeah, they she, she kept saying, "Can we? are we going to see our friend again? Is our friend going to show us more of Germany? <laughs> <laughs> so he was a great tour guide. <laughs> and we got this very cool wine, something we probably never would have found on our own, this Trier Sant Matiser. And uh, from what I can tell, it's uh, ha there's a vineyard in, in the middle of Trier, right in the town, in, in the city of Trier, oh. run by... Well, uh, all those hills yeah, right there. Yeah, could have been and run by an abbey, uh, abbey mm. of monks. So, I mean, it's really funny, mm, so you know, cool. <clears throat> in America, we associate, you know, not drinking <laughs> alcohol with religion. And here, the monks and everybody, yes, they're the ones that are totally making the beer and, yes. and beer and alcohol and beer and wine. It's pretty, it's pretty neat. Like you see them saying their prayers and like <laughs> hanging out with their bros, like drinking beer. I mean, like, it's so different. <laughs> Because so America was started by all the Puritans. Yeah, so there's also the uh, Traubensaft, the grape juice for the yes. kids. So they'll have to try that later. I'm sure they'll like that. Yeah, it's very, the kids are, have been waiting to drink this all week. So thank you, Christian. They're, they're always asking, you know, can we have a special drink tonight? And so that's so going to be there. Tonight we'll have drink. a special drink. Mm hmm. And you can see our laundry drying in the background. I was, <laughs> I was going to move it to make the shot more clean, but I thought, hey, it's real life. <laughs> that's what's happening also, at our house. Also, it's a white wine. I wasn't sure. I didn't yeah. look at the label, though. Well, usually I think these green bottles are usually white wine. Oh, okay. But anyway, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's just a guess. All right. Prost, prost and prost. Prost, Christian. <laughs> yeah, danke. Oh, a sweet wine. That is yeah. really good. Very good. Hmm. Definitely like that. Not too sweet though. No, no, it's not. It has other flavor to it too. I mean, it has a I'm, lot of flavor. I'm Very no fruity. sommelier or anything, but it's pretty nice. Neither am I. <laughs> well, I loved it when we lived in France and you go to the wine shop and they would like be really insistent <laughs> on knowing what you were serving, what, <laughs> what you were getting the wine for. If you told them, I'm going to have Beef fromage or fromage uh -huh. or whatever they'll be very insistent that you must you know they, they mm -hmm. will refuse to sell you a wine that does not match with whatever yes. you said you're going to have i mean literally they you know they would not sell it to you they're like no i refuse <laughs> i will not sell you that wine to go with that meal so oh, i love it you know, I love so, it. so for us who have no clue about anything we just have to trust them uh -huh. or, or else we'd never come out with wine out of the wine store I forgot about that when we lived there. That was pretty funny. And I find Germans, uh, from what we get in our YouTube comments, you know, are similar about things like, no, you can't have vice, uh, vice, vice first on the before grill. noon on the grill. <laughs> what? Oh my God, that's an abomination. And like, yeah, certain types of beers must be in certain glasses these and poured be, certain ways. Have and, to be the right way. And yeah. That's all right. And I don't Fall know, we tradition. don't really have that kind of, do we kind of have that culture in the U.S.? Well, I mean, 
about i'm sure yeah. there's some things we must be particular you, about if you have meat you have red wine if you have fish you have white wine yeah I mean, that's, that's, kinda, the that's basically about, the <laughs> that's about the closest you can get <laughs> yeah i mean there's def the people are a lot more cultured in europe yeah i would say a lot more traditions to follow yeah, there's so much more history yeah. and therefore traditions that have come with that history and America just doesn't have that yet. So maybe in a few hundred years they'll have a little bit more <laughs> maybe so. be more particular about their hot this, dogs and this, hamburgers. This particular type of mustard <laughs> must go with this. Yes, one. with this type of hot dog. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Um, so thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video of seeing Colcombe Castle and Trier. We did enjoy our trip even though we were kind of hobbling along like with peg legs or something but <laughs> we, 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 we did it. enjoy it and we're glad we went For so sure. we hope you enjoyed last week's video this week's video and uh, hope you have a great rest of your day so shoot and tug ciao Cheers. <laughs>